Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and it's time to get back to league football. After a bit of a, a break, a break that wasn't exactly planned, it's time to get back into chasing the 10. We're getting our first league game since that draw at Rugby Park a couple of weeks ago. It's not going to be easy. We're going up against the Championship winners of last season, Dundee United. Got to give my preview for the game, my predictions for the lineup, and ultimately what to expect from the opponents as we head into what's going to be an incredibly tough match. <laughs> If you haven't already watched my Three Things We Learned video from the game midweek, then I suggest you go and do so. A lot of the things that we touched on in that will be brought up in this in terms of how Celtic played on Tuesday night in that Champions League qualifier. But we'll get more into how Celtic will play and how I think they should play later on in the video. We'll talk a little bit about that game though. Uh, we came off, we come off the back of a 6-0 win. Fantastic result midweek and it's exactly what you're looking for when heading into a game away from home in the league, of course. We've not played a league game. We missed out on the chance of playing St Mirren and Aberdeen over the past couple of weeks due to the whole situation that volleyball and golly caused. But we're over that. We're ready to move on. And we're heading to Tannadice for the first time in quite a while. I mean, it's a shame that the away support isn't getting to go because from what I've heard, I've never had the chance to go to United away. Um, but from what I've heard, it's one of the best venues to go to. It's one of the best away trips in the league. So it would have been good to have fans there. It would have been nice to be back. I think it'll be the first time I've played in Tannadice since something like 2015. So, you know, going back there and playing Dundee United is going to be exciting. I'm sure Dundee United will be, you know, chomping at the bit to play against Celtic again after a long absence of not having that match. So it's going to be very interesting. There's an interesting dynamic going into it. But going into this game, you know, we're red hot. Tuesday night was exactly what we needed. That performance to kind of show everybody we are, you know, we're not sleeping. Um, we're, we're, the, the, the break hasn't affected us. And we're ready to score more goals than ever. And, you know, it didn't even feel like throughout that game we even got out of second gear. And, of course, once again, as I said in the three things we learned video, we were playing a team who are far weaker than us, a team who are nowhere near the level and also they weren't even training properly due to the fact there was a Covid outbreak up in Iceland so there was a lot of disadvantages for them but ultimately we can't look at that 6-0 win as something incredible because we were always going to have to go out there and win 3-4-5-0 whatever because we're a far better team but nonetheless a very impressive performance and the, the positives that we did see from that if we implement it in this game we should be winning with no hassle but Dundee United have had a very good start to the season. The, the thing about Tuesday night though was the way that we looked, we looked so ambitious, we looked creative, we were looking for new ways to score goals, it wasn't the same old, you know, you know the first game of the season against Hamilton when we got five goals, it was a terrific performance, exactly what you're wanting on the opening game of the season, but you know, a few of the goals came from the same system, get the ball out wide, get it in the box, get on the end of it, square the ball, nothing wrong with that, you scored goals, scored goals, but the way we were scoring against Reykjavik, of course, yes, lesser opponent once more, but... You know, Julian's long ball, the way El Yunusia looked the whole, the whole game, Edouard with the, the way he was controlling the ball at his feet. Everything was just beautiful to watch and we looked really hungry to score in different ways. And that's what I really liked about the game on Tuesday heading into this because it's not going to be an easy game and Dundee United have shown that by the start of their league season. Of course, a new era for Dundee United back in the top flight and, you know, a new manager as well, Robbie Nielsen, getting them promoted last season but leaving the job to return to Hearts in the Championship. Mickey Mellon has came in and, you know what, their start to the season has been incredible. I had the fortunate uh, position of being the one to watch the Dundee United game last week on the Talk Scottish Football live stream and, you know, I was very impressed with how Dundee United played that game and if you remember back to my start of the season predictions video, I have done the United quite high up. I think I have them sixth for seventh to finish. And that is purely down to the, the appointment of Mickey Mellon. I don't want to sit here and bum lick. Uh, because that is what I felt like I'd done in the season predictions video. And I feel like I've done it a lot in Talk Scottish Football as well. But Mickey Mellon is a tremendous manager. He's shown that down south with the back-to-back the -back promotions he's got. Uh, and the different teams he's managed. He's came up here and I think it was the best choice he could have got uh, to, to lead them into this season. They found themselves in the position Dundee United starting this season with Shankland out injured, who was the main man for them. He was the man that was meant to come up here, show everybody how good he is, get his move, blah, blah, blah. You know, Shankland was the man, but he's out. And they're still managing to play very good football. Besides that loss to Hibs on the opening game of the season, which they ran very close. Um, sorry, it wasn't Hibs. Got it wrong. It was Hibs. It just wasn't the opening game of the season. Despite that loss to Hibs, which they still looked impressive in, they have started so well for a team who's just came up from the championship. And that is 
purely down to the system that Mickey Merlin's brought in, a 4-4-2. You know what, I've said it so many times before, there is nothing wrong with a 4-4-2, there is this myth in football, and I'm happy to see it coming back around, even in England, and up here as well. More teams are reverting back to it, because it works, it's a successful system. If you have the right players, and you have the right man in charge as well, it's a system that goes well. Two strikers up front, nothing wrong with it, of course, over the past kind of 10-15 years, we've seen the, the footballing game develop into the 4-5-1, having the one man up front, having wingers beside him, even the 4-3-3s and a lot of passing football. But the 4-4-2, if you have the right players in each of their positions, in each role, you've got to be successful with it. I've always been a fan of the 4-4-2 and a lot of people have called me stupid for thinking that. A lot of my pals judge me for saying that I, I like the stuff that Sam Allardyce plays. I don't like the stuff Sam Allardyce plays. Not saying that at all, but the 4 4 2 is a tactic, and Simeone is another example of that showed how well it can be used. Um, and Alec Ferguson up to the detail as well. Now, I'm not comparing Mickey Merlin to any of those managers, but he knows what he's doing, and it showed that at the start of this season. Dundee United are looking really strong for a team who's newly promoted without their best player. Players over the park for Dundee United are going to be difficult to play, uh, deal with uh, in this match. Nicky Clark up front, he came on at the weekend against Ross County just there well, in their 2-1-1. Of course, that's one of the key points. United are coming off a big win against Ross County, uh, which will bring them a lot of energy into the game, I imagine. They'll be hungry to keep that form going. Um, but Nicky Clark came on into that game, changed it. Seven, I think Dundee United in the second half, yes, looked very much the better side. But when Nicky Clark came on about the 70th minute, it changed everything. Uh, he was on to the end of every ball, the speed that he brought into the game, he was creating chances, and then he got the goal as well to win in the match. He is going to be very tricky for Celtic to deal with. Now, of course, we talk about Julian not liking to deal with physical strikers. Nicky Clark isn't a physical striker, he's a smaller guy. I don't think he's going to be battling Julian for the ball, because Julian would sit him on his backside. But, you know, he's going to be in behind, and if he catches anybody, you know, sleeping for a second, he will be one-on-one -on -one with Barkas, and we'll find ourselves in trouble. So, Nicky Clark's a player to look out for at the weekend if he does start the game, but he also has the potential to come on and once again change the game from the bench. So, very dangerous player to look out there in Nicky Clark. And the man that I want to talk about as well is going to be solid to break down is the ginger Bobo Baldi himself, Mark Reynolds. What a start to the season he's had. Arguably man of the match in their last two match days. He has been a rock at the back for them and he's got to be one of those players that's got to be solid to get past because Dundee United will. Let's not, let's not kind of tiptoe around this. They will change their style of play this weekend. They will revert to the system that many of the Scottish teams do when playing Celtic and that is, you know, making sure that they are tight at the back park the bus and suck the life out of us, trying to frustrate us. We need to wear them out through passing. That is realistically what is going to happen. Uh, but Mark Reynolds has got to be solid to get by. I think that Edward is uh, going to face a tough task, but you know we've seen what he could do with the ball at his feet. Get the ball to Edward's feet. Tuesday night was a prime example of that for his goal. Um, I'd love to see him having more chances like that given to him. But Mark Reynolds has got to be a solid guy to get past. He's led the back line superbly for Dundee United at the start of this season. Uh, it's not going to be easy. And then, of course, around the park as well, it's a team of... Players that probably are championship quality, apart from the couple that I've maybe mentioned, uh, and Shankland as well, and Seagrass is a good keeper as well, but around the park probably as a group of championship quality players, but the system that Merlin has them playing in, and the team spirit around them, is going to make it an incredibly different game, but on to us, on to the champions, Celtic. I would love to see the 3-5-2 played this weekend, um, I think that it's very plausible that it could happen, now of course... A lot of people were suggesting we whip it out on Tuesday night against Reykjavik. And I thought to myself, yes, we could, but Ayeti has just signed. Let's let him settle. Let's get him some minutes under the belt. We weren't too sure if Beaton and El Ahmed were ready to start games yet. It was still a risk, blah, blah, blah. But now we've seen how good El Ahmed was on Tuesday night. Arguably the best player on the park. You know, we can rely on him to put in a performance. We've seen Beaton being solid. I think he's ready to get back into playing football. And, and before the break, he was incredible. Back in February time, March... Brilliant. Um, he's ready. We have a lot of players to make this 3-5-2 possible now. We have the players to make it work. You know, we can we can go out and do this at the weekend. I think a Yeti should be ready now to come and start a game. Uh, and hopefully he does. Uh, I want to see us go for the 3-5-2. I want us to be as ambitious as we were on Tuesday night with our attacks. I want to see us push Tundee United to the edge. Uh, and really get them guessing what we're going to do next. I don't want to be predictable stuff. The usual we get from Celtic. The camera angle might have changed, by the way. I had to get food. Um, but... You know, I, I want Celtic to go and really push uh, and go for a really attacking style this weekend because Kilmarnock was a letdown. Um, we, we, we were just like so out of, you know, energy and, and the ideas were gone and we were questioning what to do next. 
get Stunned United, get the two up front, get a Yeti and Edwards partnership started, get El Ahmed back on the park if that is playing as a back, part of a back three or at the right wing back. The only thing is with El Ahmed at right wing back, does he have the legs to do it? Yeah, he is just back to playing football. We need to wait and see. But no, I'm really looking forward to seeing this weekend us going for a really attacking style. And I think we're going to score a few goals this weekend, but I don't think Dundee United are going to make it easy. I'm going to say that, and then I'm going to say we're going to win 2-1, a few goals. Uh, for the start of the prediction, I do actually think for the first time this season, I'm going to predict us going for 3-5-2. I've been very reluctant in saying it for the last couple of match previews. I've been so confident with 4 2 3 1, and I was right in saying so. But I just have this feeling Lenny's got to go do it. We need to get points to the board. Let's take advantage of Rangers dropping points last week. We've got to keep that in mind as well. We need to start this catch up now because we're behind two games. Ultimately, we're going to be behind Rangers for a, a, a portion of the season now until we get those games back. So we need to make sure that we capitalise on every drop point there is on the other side of Glasgow. So I think Barkas will be in goals. I think we're going to see a back three of Ayer, Julian and El Ahmed. I think Frimpong will come in at the right-hand side, Taylor on the left. I do think James Forrest will be dropped. Yes, you heard right. I think he'll be dropped. In the middle, I think it's going to be McGregor and Cham. And Brown, yes, you heard right, I think in Cham will start. I've not spoken enough in Cham, I've spoken enough in this video, I'd love to have done a whole post on the video on in Cham alone, because he came on the, the pitch on Tuesday, looked great, um, I just have I've spoken a little bit too much, so I think in Cham's going to start alongside McGregor and Brown, and uh, then up front, a Yeti and Edward. And my score prediction, I'm going to go for 3-1 to Celtic, that is what I'm going to say. Dundee United though, very impressive start. Well done to Mickey Mellon and the boys for coming up and, and, and really starting the season strongly. But Celtic are going to have you this weekend. I've got a good feeling. If you have enjoyed, make sure to hit like and subscribe. It is much appreciated. And I'll see you all next time.